Hi everyone, I'm Susan Nutowitz. This is letsfeelexcellent.com and this video is about cranial sacral therapy. What are the benefits and how does it work? And some of the frequently asked questions about the cranial sacral system. So basically the cranial sacral system is your cerebral spinal fluid that um, it's just feeling it's how it fills when it fills in the brain and when it gets reabsorbed back into the bloodstream. So how does it work? So the blood goes up into the head. We need plenty of blood for the head. And the blood goes to the very center of us, the very center of the, the brain. And there are these ch chambers that you might know of. They're called ventricles. On top of the chambers, there's these, uh, this little rooftop called the coracal plexus. And basically what it's like is a filter. And so the blood comes through and the proteins stay out. So the super clean, non-protein, medically they call it tissue fluid or plasma, plasma, I call it liquid crystal. It's clean, it's viscous, it's clear, it's salty, and it creates this movement within us that is that brings us home, it brings us centered, it relaxes us, it allows us to be separate from any resistance that we could feel in our life. Therefore, it allows us to be very rested just being in touch with this this rhythm of the the filling of the cushion the cerebral spinal fluid this liquid crystal and then the uh, reabsorption of the liquid crystal back into the veins into the bloodstream that goes back into the heart so what happens People will ask me, if you do cranial sacral therapy on me, are you only going to work on my head? No. I can work anywhere in the body. So in the head, though, is where the, the ventricles are, and that's where the, the flexion happens and the cerebral spinal fluid is made, and then it's pumped all the way around the brain, and it's pumped down the spinal cord. When it's it's pumped down the spinal cord, this motion can be felt anywhere in the body. Where it's not felt, and, oh and by the way, don't start going up to people and, and looking at their head and seeing it if it goes like this and if it goes like that. You won't be able to see it. But a therapist that's trained can feel it. It's felt ever so lightly. So that's that's another thing you may have known about cranial sacral therapy is that it's performed n not with so much pressure, but it's performed with the, the pressure that meets the tissue. So whatever pressure the, the tissue needs, usually it's very light. And it's not light to to be um, you know some sort of technique that's etherical and it's so it's part of the uh, ambiance or whatever it is it's light because it's something that's not really loud and so it that's you're feeling the the therapist is feeling vibration and so that is just what kind of pressure is needed for that tool. That's, that's all it is. This is not like, I don't want to confuse it with like Reiki or um, spiritual Lomi Lomi that has prayer involved in it. It's not like that. Or um, what's the uh, Barbara Brennan's work? Um, the light hands touch. It's not like that at all. This is very um, scientific 
It's an osteopathic technique. It was developed by an osteopath and it works with this, this rhythm of the body. How does it work? Well, when a trained therapist puts their hands on the body and there's different levels as the therapist progresses with their training, depending on how in depth that they want to go and also how much practice that they get, um, they can pick up quite a few things. They can pick up more information the, the more developed they are. So when the therapist puts their hands on someone and there's already been some symptoms talked about that the client wants to um, correct or maybe not, maybe there isn't anything talked about. So the, the therapist can feel where the uh, fluids of the body, where this rhythm is not. And where it is not, that's where to work. Because that means there's some inflammation or there's the, the fluid, the, this tissue fluid, not necessarily the cerebral spinal fluid, but the tissue fluid of the body, which is 80% of your body, is that, that, that needs some help. And that is what um, wants to be resolved in that session. Now your body will handle whatever you give it. However, the cells of your body and the nervous system of your body, they, they want to run in the most optimal and efficient way, always. So if there's a tension to this lesion that has been discovered, then the body really just wants to write itself. So when the therapist touch it, it's sort of like, it's not really the touch that resolves it, but the therapist has to have certain things in place. For one thing, their own li liquid crystal at the core of them has to be clear and has to be receptive. It has to be receptive to intuition. It has to be receptive to um, a whole bunch of things. It cannot be receptive to, you know, okay, so then there's going to be the four o'clock and the four, is the four o'clock coming? I don't know. I didn't call. And afterwards I, I have to grocery shop for this and this. No, no, no. It's not going to work. It's, and it's also not going to work if the, the therapist is thinking, okay, I better resolve this migraine headache. This is, this is what has to happen. So please come through me now and, and, and let's do this. If there's any kind of insecurity like, like that, it's not going to work. The other, the only other reason that it wouldn't work is if the ther or I'm sorry, the client is not receptive. If the client is not receptive and they're lying there thinking, you know, I really don't like these light touch things. And the last time I had it, it was a waste of money and you know, that type of thing. And I'm wondering, um, I'm wondering, you know, where she's really from and where did she get that blouse and th things like this, then it's not going to work. So the client and the therapist are saying, okay, here's some symptoms that would like to be uh, at least understood, if not corrected. And uh, where is this pertaining to in the body and what do we need to do to, to resolve it? And all this information can be given. If, if information is needed, then information is given. If just physical touch is needed, then just physical touch will be used. But nothing harsh and only beneficial. <coughs> Excuse me. In fact, the um, craniosacral, you can use and you can uh, 
receive when you can't receive other forms of manual therapy. For example, if you have a cold or a flu, craniosacral therapy is far more beneficial than any over-the-counter or prescription type of thing that you can take in your body, yet you cannot go out and get a massage. If you get a massage, then you're um, going to break up the um, inflammatory process that your immune system has to heal that thing because it's got it all rounded up and walled off and it's cleaning it. If you take something to suppress it, then you're going to, the, the drug, what the drug does is shuts off that cleaning process or that healing process. Cranial sacral therapy can bring down the inflammation, it can lessen the symptoms and facilitate the cleaning process. What cranial sacral therapy does is it increases the flow of the water through these viscous tissues. So it increases the flow where it's stuck. When you have a stream and it's, it's running, it's running really clean. You might notice an eddy is where the water gets a little bit stuck and there's sticks and something in it. So what cranial sacral therapy does is it lets the eddies break up and lets all that debris flow through so the river can flow cleanly through that area again. If you notice, if there was a, an eddy and you went up to it and you just started hitting it and putting a lot of pressure in it, those sticks might, some of them might break, through, break free and then a lot of them would probably just stay there. So you notice that light hand would work better to let those flow through, right? So it's the same thing with cranial sacral therapy. The light touch, again, is only used because it's, it's only whatever pressure is needed. So if the pressure um, is needed to be more than five grams, then I use five grams. It's kind of like uh, what I'm doing is going into a preschool. And the funny thing is, I'm not working with the preschooler that's having the problem. I'm working with another preschooler. Let me tell you what I mean by that. So we have this filling of the cerebral spinal fluid and this reabsorption of the cerebral spinal fluid. So let's say, let's take the head because it's easy. So let's say some of these bones are not in alignment. So the uh, sphenoid bone wants to go like this while the cerebral spinal fluid is filling and then it wants to go like this when it's being reabsorbed. And the reason for that is the brain, one of the reasons for the cerebral spinal fluid is to be the water that the brain or the boat is floating in. So the brain's sort of like a boat floating in that. If we didn't have that water for the boat to float in, our brain would be so heavy. So it makes the brain lighter. So when the cerebral spinal fluid fills, the brain tips and the pituitary gland tips. So this pituitary gland sits in the sphenoid bone, which is a butterfly bone. It's not on this side and this side. It goes all the way through. It's a bone that shapes like a butterfly. In the very center of your head is a joint that connects with the occiput back here. So if this joint is askew at the center of the head, the foramen magnum, um, your spinal cord is going through that. It's going to sort of pinch the, um, the, the spinal cord. It's going to do something because the hole is not round anymore. It's, it'll be, you know, if the joint is off, it'll be, you know, a little bit off somehow and you'll have these these bones sort of not making a nice smooth hole for that that spinal cord to go through so that in itself could be a catch but 
Um, incidentally, have you ever had the experience where you're in light sleep or you know of somebody that, that's in light sleep and they or you feel like you're flying or you have this, this vision of falling and then you wake up <gasps> and this happens in, in, when, in the lighter sleep stages. Well, that very well could be the pituitary gland doing this and your awareness of it. So your head's straight, but you, your pituitary gland is doing this. So we're on the example of this, this sphenoid bone, and say the bone, there was some kind of accident or something, and the bone is like this. It's not like this. It's, it's kind of like this. Then the fascia around that bone is going to be pulled it's going to be pulled here, it's going to be bunched up here, and that is going to change the, the water in the, in the tissue, and it's also going to send signals up to the brain that says, this is, <laughs> is not right. So the therapist is going to feel maybe a tightness on the right side, and maybe the left side is moving ever so slightly. Well, the therapist, I'm the therapist, I'm going to work with the left side. I'm going to work with the side that's moving. And the, um, the other side, I'm going to let that preschooler continue to finger paint or whatever they're doing. With this preschooler, I'm going to bring a huge box of crayons and some paper and let them have at it because I want to be their friend. And then there's this Tom Sawyer kind of thing that happens, and the other preschooler wants to be involved, and so they come and they join in with the, with the crayons. And so then I can kind of, um, it kind of moves just a little bit, and then I can suggest things now to that preschooler, because I'm not, now they're friends. And I can say, well, how about the purple? You know, you don't have to have the purple, but how about the purple? And so then I can have them go just a little bit more, and then I can have, and then maybe it'll come back a bit. It usually does. So that's how the, the cranial sacral works. Can it work on um, phys physical issues and psychological issues? Yes, it can, because these eddies, that form, they can um, be physical trauma or mental trauma. They can be big things or small things. And if you're wondering if I have a eddy, you have like hundreds of them. What happens um, is that these memories come up, uh, either physically or mentally, and they, they come up at times when it's pertinent to to get some healing on them. So I'll do another video on how, um, how it works mentally. It's pretty, pretty interesting. But for now, I think this has been enough. And I'll, I'll do other videos because um, the sacrum moves with the cranial sacral rhythm and that can get kind of stuck. And that's sort of interesting how that joint all works together. and. Um, Different, different things that this can do. It's, it has so many uses. Even I've used it for my animals. Um, you know, they jump or get their foot stuck in the lava, in the lava or something like that. And you know, there's there's this injury that <laughs> always. It always happens when the vet is closed for two or three days, too. At first, they didn't like it. They didn't like it at all. Um, because I think, unlike my clients, they feel this water moving, this, this pressure. Here, yep, this is Nelly. You want to tell them about your first cranial sacral? 
the first time you had cranial sacral? No, not really. You don't even like cranial sacral, don't do you? Well, you like it when you're injured. It helped your leg. Remember when it helped your leg? Yeah. So she had, um, she came in and she was hobbling around. And at first she didn't stay still for it. And I just looked at her and I said, well, it works a lot better if you stay still for it. But it's, it's weird to them because this water is moving in them and they don't, they don't understand what it is. With us, we just totally relax. So she had, I think, a total of three treatments because she came to me for the second and the third one. And then that was it. She was finished and she was jumping up all over the place and done. And you never had a problem with your leg after that, huh? And every once in a while you like it just to relax, huh? Yep. Okay, so that's that's the cats. I do both. Um, I work with them both uh, with the lymphatics and the cranial sacral. Cranial sacral uh, therapy is more for the nervous system, and the lymphatics is uh, more for the cleansing, the detoxing, and the sewer system of of the body. Although they both work with the, the tissue fluid. Okay, so. I hope this helps. Put your comments down below and let me know if it helps or if you have questions. Thanks so much. I'm Susan Nutowitz, Let's Feel Excellent.com.